chapter, verse 34. Matthew 25, 34. It says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. You may be seated. We've had a wonderful week together. We've had a wonderful day. I appreciate all of those who came to the morning Bible class this morning for all the times we've been able to fellowship together for the ones with whom I've been able to spend some good quality time. Thank you so very much. I cannot thank the elders enough of the congregation here. I love them dearly as well as your preachers. They mean so very much to me. And the more that I've been able to get to know you, the membership, I have fallen in love with you as well. You have been so very kind to me with your comments. And I want you to know, just as Mordecai said in Esther 4 and verse 14, who knows whether or not you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I want you to know, you have done me more good than you will ever know. And who knows if it was not God's providence for me to benefit from you at such a time as this. Thank you from the very bottom of my heart. And I do look forward, Lord willing, to being back with you again for your question and answer form in September. I want to go to heaven. More than anything else on earth, I want to go to heaven. There's not a song that touches the chord of man's longing more than a song about heaven. There's not a thought that will pluck the tears of hope from the blurred eyes of adversity more than the thought of heaven. There's not a verse that will stabilize the heart of man during the heat of battle with temptation more than a verse about heaven. Heaven touches my life. Heaven lifts me up, sustains my energy, and gives me hope. Today when I wrestle with the infirmities of the flesh and I long for a home without disease, without pain, without death, heaven nurtures my dreams. And heaven is a place of eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6, verse 23 these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Matthew 25, 46. Heaven is a place of eternal life. Tonight for our last lesson, I would like for us to observe four things when we all get to heaven. Number one, when we all get to heaven, we will be home with our Lord God Almighty. When we all get to heaven, we will be at home with our Lord God Almighty. 
In Revelation chapter 4, we have a picture of the throne of heaven. Circled around that throne are 24 elders representing the righteous, along with four unusual beasts. These four living creatures having six wings were full of eyes around and within. They do not rest day or, not, day or night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who is and was and is to come. Revelation 4, verse 8. Heaven is the home of our Lord God Almighty. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven. Deuteronomy 26, 15. For God is in heaven and you on earth. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 2. Daniel says there is a God in heaven. Daniel 2 and verse 28. In 10 of the 17 times that Jesus refers to God in the Sermon on the Mount, He references Him either as your heavenly Father, or our Father in heaven. Turn with me in your Bibles, please, to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, we'll notice at this point, verses 1 through 4. If you want, go ahead and mark this, because later in the lesson, we will come back to Revelation 21. So I'm just letting you know that we will be coming back. You might want to mark it. For the moment, just notice verses 1 through 4. In verse 1, John describes a new heaven and a new earth. The first were passed away. And of course, that ought to do away with any kind of premillennial idea of this earth remaining. What does it mean that there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth? Let the Bible speak for itself. The Bible is its own best commentary. Isaiah talks about new heavens and a new earth in Isaiah 65, verses 17 and 18, wherein he says, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing and her people a joy. This new heaven and new earth is a place filled with joy. In the very next chapter, Isaiah 66, verses 22 and 23, he goes on to describe the new heavens and the new earth and says, All flesh will come and worship before me, says the Lord. This is going to be a place of worship. And then the Apostle Peter describes the new heavens and a new earth in 2 Peter 3.13, in which righteousness dwells. So in Revelation 21 and verse number 1, when John reveals there is a new heaven and a new earth, it is a place of joy, a place of worship, and a place where only righteousness dwells. Drop down to verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, Revelation 21.3, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them and be their God. Did you catch that? God Himself, not just an ambassador. God Himself, not just a representative. God Himself, not merely Michael the archangel or any one of the twelve apostles, God Himself 
will dwell with them and be their God. Verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. No more tear-stained pillows of disappointment. No more children with scraped knees running to their mother. No more teenagers wrestling with a sense of identity. No more single moms wondering why as she struggles to put shoes on the feet of her little children. No more divorce. No more broken homes. No more broken hearts. No more shattered dreams. Wouldn't it be great to be able to stand on the shore of the Sea of Crystal holding hand in hand with 10,000 times 10,000 angels and saints and to be able to sing the song, There is a God. He is alive. In Him we live and we survive. From dust, our God created man. He is our God the great I am. When we all get to heaven, we will be home with our Lord God Almighty. Number two, when we all get to heaven, we will be home with Emmanuel. God with us, Jesus the Christ. Number two, when we all get to heaven, we will be home with Emmanuel. God with us, Jesus the Christ. You recall in Matthew 1, verses 21 through 23, where the angel assures Joseph concerning his betrothed Mary, that she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. He was a man who was more than a man, who lived without sin. He was a man who was more than a man, who died without sin. He was a man who was more than a man, who rose from the grave to be able to offer forgiveness of our sins. Jesus, blessed Jesus, harmony to the ear, honey to the lips, hope for the soul, Jesus, blessed Jesus, Lion of Judah, Lamb of God, Root of David, King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus, blessed Jesus, to the man stumbling in the darkness of this world influenced by Satan, He is the light of the world. To man hungering for some substance in life, he is the bread of life. To man fighting without any direction in life, traversing throughout the ways of relativism, in the chasm of void of pluralism, he is the way, the truth, and the life, and heaven is his home. He came from heaven. John 6, the bread of God is He who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. He went back home to be in heaven. Hebrews 9, 24, Christ has not entered into holy places made with hands, which are the copies of the true, but into heaven itself 
now to appear in the presence of God for us. And one day, He is going to return from heaven to meet the redeemed in the skies and take us home. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. The day of the Lord will come, uh, the, for the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Let me ask you, What are the three most important things in the entire world to you? For what two things would you die? For what one thing Will you live? The Apostle Paul answered that question. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3.14 For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ. Which is far better, chapter 1 and verse 23. Oh, I want to go to heaven and see my Lord Jesus Christ. I want to look at His hands and see the scars. And know that they were there for me. I want to see the scars in his brow. I want to see the scar in his side. I want to see the scars on his back. And know that they are all there for me. I want to see Him. I want to say to Him, My Jesus, I love Thee. I know Thou art mine. For Thee, all the follies of sin, I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art Thou. If ever I love Thee, my Jesus, tis now. I want to go to heaven and be with Emmanuel. God with us, Jesus the Christ. Number three, when we all get to heaven, we will be at home with our heroes of faith as well as our faithful friends and family. When we all get to heaven, we will be home with our heroes of faith as well as our faithful friends and family. Our lives have really been touched by a lot of individuals. Our lives have been touched even by the Old Testament faithful. That's exactly what the Hebrews writer says in chapter 12 and verse 1 after describing so many of those great Old Testament faithful in chapter 11. Chapter 12 immediately begins, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Our lives can be touched by those Old Testament faithful. Our lives may be touched by the New Testament faithful. 
I'm encouraged when I read the Apostle Paul say, imitate me as I imitate Christ. 1 Corinthians 11.1 Matter of fact, there are many people who touch my life. Our friends touch our lives. Proverbs 17.17 17, A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Our parents touch our lives. Proverbs 6.20 Keep your father's instruction and do not forsake the law of your mother. Our spouse touches our life. Proverbs 18.22, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Our children touch our lives. Children are a heritage from, from God. And the fruit of the womb is His reward. Psalm 127 verse 3. And here is the magnificent news for you brethren tonight. They all may be with us in heaven. Heaven can be their home. We know that concerning the Old Testament faithful. They are going to be in heaven with us. David himself said, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, 6. Jesus said concerning Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that many will come from the east and west and sit down with them in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 8, 11. Just as the Hebrews writer describes so many of them in truth who were searching for that better country. That is a heavenly country. Where God is not ashamed, be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Hebrews eleven sixteen. The New Testament faithful can be in heaven with us as well. I read Paul's final discourse when he says, Therefore there is laid up for me a crown of of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also who love His appearing. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 8. Peter describes looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord, because in which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. 2 Peter 3.12 We look for and hasten for that occasion with Peter. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen, even so come Lord Jesus. Revelation 22.20 I am filled with the hope that our friends can be in heaven with us. Paul made reference to the Thessalonians as his friends to be able to be in the presence of God together. 1 Thessalonians 2.19 Our family can be in heaven with us. Who's not touched when we hear David say concerning the death of his child, now he is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. 2 Samuel 12, 3. And speaking of her dead brother Lazarus, even Martha said, I know that he will rise again. In the resurrection at the last day, John eleven twenty four, 24, our family can be with us in heaven. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream. And I do. I dream about heaven. I dream of a day in which I can sit down 
and discuss the intricacies of the old law with none other than the lawgiver himself, Moses. I dream about possibly one day sitting down and hearing from his own mouth as he recounts the battle with Goliath from none other than David himself. I dream about what it may be like to be able to sit down and talk about the life of a preacher with the great Apostle Paul. I dream about talking concerning the frailties of humanity with the Apostle Peter. I dream about talking about the struggles and the rise to power with Joseph. Oh, I want to go to heaven and I want to see my friends there. Friends who are so dear to my life. I want to see you there. You are my friends. And I want to be able to walk up to you and say good morning. And walk and hear you say back to me, good morning. And it will always be a good morning. For there is no night there. I want to smell the essence of incorruptibility and feel the power of immortality. I want to be able to see my family. I want to be able to see my father in heaven who was one of the greatest influences on my life, leading me not only to become a Christian, but to be a gospel preacher. I want to be sure and see my mother, who set such a wonderful example for me, studied her Bible every single day and told me the story of Jesus. I want to be able to see my in-laws who have treated me just like one of their very own. I want to see my wife in heaven. She's not going to be my wife in heaven because there will be no marriage in heaven. Matthew 22 and verse 30. But she will still be my very best friend. And I have no doubt that I still will be able to be hand in hand with her there. Because we will know that we each helped each other get there. I want to see my children in heaven. They're getting older. They're not little any longer, but being children and always being children no matter what age they are, I still want to bring them to Jesus and put them in His arms. The very one who said, little children, allow them to come unto me. And those of you who are grandparents and have grandchildren, I know you would say the very same thing. I want to go to heaven because it is the home of our heroes of faith and our faithful family and friends. Finally, number four. When we all get to heaven, we will be at a home custom made for our enjoyment. When we all get to heaven, we will be at a home custom made for our enjoyment. Jesus says in Matthew 25, 34, the text that was read this evening, the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom market prepared for you. From the foundation of the world. 
Heaven is a place custom designed and prepared by none other than God Himself for me, for you, for our eternal enjoyment. Did not Jesus Himself say, let not your heart be troubled? You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. John 14, 1 through 3. You have Revelation 21 open? Look with me beginning in verse 9. Let's read together. Revelation 21, 9. And see the details in the preparation of this place as John best describes with his limited vocabulary. There came unto me one of the seven angels which had seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, Come hither. I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like even a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. It had a wall great and high and had twelve gates, and all, at the gates twelve angels and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. He that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. He measured the wall thereof, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. The building of the wall of it was of jasper. The city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a... Chrysosprasus, the eleventh adjacent, the twelfth an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pure uh, pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of the Lord did lighten it, And the Lamb is the light thereof. God's prepared that place. Custom designed. I want to go to heaven. When we all get to heaven, we will be home with our Lord God Almighty. When we all get to heaven, we will be home with Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus the Christ. When we all get to heaven, we will be home with our heroes of faith and our faithful family and friends. When we all get to heaven, we will be at a home custom designed for our enjoyment. L. Lord God Almighty, I, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, F, faithful family and friends and heroes of faith, E, a place designed for my enjoyment, L, I, F, E, heaven is a place of eternal life. Do you want to go there? If you're not a Christian, heaven will not be your home. On this final night, we offer this invitation 
for you to be able to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ because we want you to be in heaven. If you are not a Christian, but you know what you should do to be born again, born of water and of the Spirit, to allow the Word of God to instruct you, and for you to submit in obedience through baptism, so that the blood of Jesus may wash away your sins and provide you with that hope of an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away. Reserved in heaven for you. You're not a Christian. Please consider becoming one tonight during this invitation song. If you are a Christian, but your life is not right with God, you are putting your soul in jeopardy of not making it to heaven. That's our goal. That's our aim. That's our very purpose as Christians. I want to go to heaven. I hope you do too. And if we can help you go there, let us help you as together we stand and as we sing.